Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper with a video about radio connectors or cable connectors for your communications preps. But before I get into connectors, I want to talk briefly about the cable. And typically, RF cable for radios is what they call coax cable. You'll have a center conductor, a dielectric insulator, an outer shield, and a protective plastic jacket. The most common cables that you'll see typically with amateur radio operators, uh, this is not an exclusive list, this is just the most common ones, are RG58, RG8, RG213, and RG214, and LMR400. RG58 probably being the worst cable, and LMR400 being the best. Now before anybody comments, I put a picture here on the side, there's also a cable that's used by radio operators uh, called ladder line but this video is not about ladder line. The most common cable you'll see probably with amateur radio equipment for mobile radios and base stations is the PL259 and SO239 connectors. This was a World War II connector and it used to be referred to and by some still as the UHF connector and it was designed for frequencies above 30 megahertz. The male end of this connector is the PL259 connector the female end of this connector is referred to as the SO239 connector. And again, this is a screenshot. This is probably the most common mobile and fixed equipment type connector you'll see out there. If you buy surplus equipment on eBay or local auctions, you may run across some Motorola equipment that uses uh, what they call the mini UHF connector. And that's a shrunk down version of the PL259 connector. And this was used on Max, Motorola Max Track radius, radios, uh, radius radios. So you might see it out there. It's not as common today, but it's still out there. So that's the mini UHF connector. Another common connector you'll see, and a lot of times with dual band mobiles and base stations, is the N type connector. Uh, this is used for VHF and UHF base stations and mobiles. Uh, some HF equipment has it, uh, but it's probably just as common as the PL259 connector is out there today. Uh, for portable equipment, uh, you might see this connector still out there. Most definitely with uh, aftermarket antennas you buy, it's the BNC connector. And again, this is a male and a female image of that connector. And a lot of your antennas you buy for your walks and radios and things like that, you know, you'll buy that adapter and it'll give you a BNC connector to connect a, a whip antenna to it. This connector is the TNC connector and this is typically used uh, in networking type equipment. Uh, the older Linksys routers that had removable antennas had a, a variant of the TNC connector. Uh, they had what they call reverse TNC connectors where the threads were paired up with uh, a female center conductor and you, or switched it around a little bit so you couldn't go by cabling and use an external antenna. But they use TNC type connectors, and this is a TNC connector. You probably won't see this with any amateur radio equipment. Uh, F type connectors. This is the connector on the back of your television. I don't have the center pin because I don't have a piece of cable, but this is a simple crimp on connector, and this is an F type connector. SMA type connectors. This connector is becoming more and more popular with handheld radios with the manufacturers and you can have the port on the top of the radio be male or female and typically they're not following the standard or the industry standard for that connector with respects to the depth of the dielectric so on this slide here you'll see uh, three different types of adapters that I have and notice the depth of the white dielectric it differs for each connector and that's vendor specific. It's still called an SMA connector, but if you're buying an adapter or using an adapter, compare the adapter you have with the fitting on the end of the antenna that came with the radio and make sure the depth is correct. Here's a, uh, a slide of the two SMA adapters I have for my two handheld radios. The one on the left is a Kenwood specific adapter, and the one on the right is my Yesu adapter, the Kenwood radio has a male port on the top of it and the Yesu has a female port on the top of it and you can see that in this image here so 
you got to make sure you have enough of these adapters uh, for your communications preps because if you lose one or break one, you could be out of business. So typically, what does a connector look like when you buy it? And I'm going to use the PL259 because it's probably the most common out there. And this is a standard PL259 connector that you would buy at a ham radio fest or radio shack or order online. That is what they call a solder on type. I don't really prefer these, but I have a couple in my bag. Uh, you'll notice the end of it uh, has a wider opening for, for larger coax cable, RG8 and RG213. But then you can buy a screw and adapter that goes into that connector and reduces the size for the cabling down to the RG58 size cable. So you can see in the top left hand corner, then the adapter, and, and then with the adapter inserted. Uh, more common today, I say, is the crimp on PL259 connector. And the left hand side is a connector for RG58, and the right hand side is for RG8 or RG213. So these are common connectors, and now I'm going to transition into a short video on adapters you may wish to have. In the making of this video, I went through my coax adapter collection here and pulled out a bunch that, or a few, that I think every prepper should have as part of their comms prep. Now, in addition to your vendor-specific adapters for your handheld radios, which you should have a couple of, there's some basic adapters for coax cable every prepper should have if they have communications equipment. So I'm going to pull two out here. So let's say you have two pieces of coax cable and you want to join them together because you need some extra distance. This is an adapter for cabling that uses PL259 and this adapter has two SO239 ends so you could join that type of cable. If you have cable that's made with N-type connectors, this is N-type female to N-type female. You could join those together. You may have a piece of equipment that has an N-type connector on the back, but you only have cabling with PL259 connectors. Well, then this adapter is what you need. N-type to SO239. You put that on the back of the radio, and you can use your PL259 cable. The other way around, you might have a piece of equipment that has an SO239 connector on the back and you only have N-type cabling. So this is a PL259 to N-type female and you can put this on the back of the radio and again use your N-type cabling. If you have equipment with BNC but you only have PL259 cable, there's an adapter for that. Uh, if you want to go to a piece of BNC cable, there you can take your SO239 radio and get that to BNC. If you have some Motorola equipment that uses that mini UHF adapter or UHF connector, you can get an adapter that will take that from mini UHF to N-type. You can also get this from mini UHF to PL259. I just don't have one of those adapters. And here's an oddball one. I don't know where I got it or why I have it, and I've never used it, but I won't throw it away. There's a PL259 male to N-type male. I've never used it, but it's there. And if you have equipment and you need to make right angles, let's say you want to hook an antenna directly to the back of it, uh, this is an N-type male to N-type female. That'll give you a right angle on a piece of equipment. And then, same thing for SO239 and PL259 equipment. There you have PL259 into the piece of equipment with an SO239 connector at the top and you can hook up cabling to that as well. And as always, uh, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Cons Prepper.